So this video is about doing time lapses in high resolution with smartphones and um, everything I'm going to say uh, will apply to modern smartphones you find in the market today to the Samsung S8, S9, S10, S10 Plus. Uh, it will apply to the Huawei P20, P30. Uh, the phone you are looking at here is the P30 Pro from Huawei. It's the phone I currently use and I love that phone for various reasons but this is not uh, the topic of my video here. So one thing we typically have in smartphones is if we go to the time-lapse function on the Huawei, this is in the more section here, and then you go to time-lapse, you have a pre-specified resolution in which the camera uh, will take the frames and then your phone software will compile the time-lapse video for you. So you have nothing to do on your computer. You just get uh, a ready-to-use video out of the phone. And the problem on the P30 is, and I mentioned that in uh, some of my videos on my channel here, is that the pre-specified resolution of time-lapse videos is only 720p HD. And that's not good enough for me because I want to do 4K time lapses and uh, I think Samsung, for instance, they take it in 1080p. Um, I don't think they can go uh, much higher in resolution. The same applies to the iPhone. But 720p is just too low. I think the quality is not good enough. The second reason why a 4K time lapse is superior if you work with frames, single shots, and then compile them together on your computer to become a time-lapse video is that you have more flex in terms of specifying the interval between frames. And for instance, on uh, cloud time-lapses, I think the Huawei P30 Pro actually is not providing the right speed. It's too slow. Whereas on Samsung, uh, where the function is called hyperlapse, I think actually it's too quick. So the user has no option to specify certain parameters uh, by her or himself which made me think. So let's go out of the time-lapse mode and let's go to Google Play. I was uh, trying to figure out uh, what, um, what I can do to help me in uh, this issue and I was Googling on the Play Store for an intervalometer and I found this app here. You see it's already installed. The price tag is uh, depending on uh, what country you are in between 1 and 2 euros or US dollars. So it's highly affordable. It's not an expensive app. And what the app is doing is it is creating an overlay and you actually have in Android to grant the right to become an overlay app to this app. But there is nothing bad uh, if you do that so you can safely do it. And then the app is overlaid over any other app. So if you are in the camera app the intervalometer app is an overlay and it triggers automatically for you uh, the press or the touch of the shutter button. Let's look how this is going to work. So I'm going out here. I open the app. Um, I go to open intervalometer. Now it's giving me instructions. So I open now the camera app and uh, I'm in the normal photo mode now. I have here my 40 megapixel resolution which gives me plenty of headroom to do a 4K time-lapse. I could even do an 8K time-lapse if I wanted with that functionality I'm going to show. So now it says uh, open any camera app. We have done this. Press configure button. I'm doing this right now. So you see the overlaid app finds automatically my shutter button. And then I can basically press OK now and I'm good to go. And now it's overlaid of a certain part of my camera app. It will also be overlaid of any other part of my app. If I go to the pro mode or to the super macro mode or what have you, this app will always be an overlay and will automatically trigger for me the shutter button. So let's try this out. Just um, go to your um, self timer here. I typically have this at five seconds. That means before the sequence of frames will be shut, you have some delay before this kicks in. Let's put this to five seconds. I'm going to demonstrate this in a moment. This one here is on the number of frames at 600 because if you want to compile your time lapse with 30 frames per second, uh, basically 300 uh, frames will be 10 seconds and 600 frames will be 20 seconds. So let's plug this in here again. And then you can, and this gives me the flexibility I was looking for in terms of speed of the final time lapse movie and the way this is accelerating. Uh, movements on the sky or in nature or landscape or cities when people move I can specify the time interval between each single frame so um, I can say here for instance let's go to three seconds and let's press OK now I have two options here I can press the start button then it's 
counting down five seconds, that's the timer parameter here, it's taking 600 images and between each and every image it's waiting and delaying for three seconds. That happens when I press the start button. I can also press start infinity and if I do start infinity it's continuing with those parameters to shoot frames until I tell the app to stop. So let's go and do this. Let's go to start. It's counting down five seconds. That's my self timer. And now it's starting to take shots. You see this? Waiting three seconds, taking the next shot. Waiting three seconds, taking the next shot. So basically this is like automating a person sitting in front of the camera and every three seconds pressing the shutter button. I think it's a very useful app. I like it a lot and it enables me and I'm going to show some demos in a moment to take super cool time lapses with smartphones with any resolution I want and with any flexibility in parameters for the speed of the time lapse in a way I can do this with uh, professional cameras. Um, I think actually that the 4K resolution is uh, really superior to 1080p because you can use in Final Cut Pro or other video cut software Ken Burns effect which makes your video much more lively and I'm going to show this too in the second part of the video. Let's set up a scene for a little experiment here. So let's now try this out live in one example which is a bit crazy because I want to basically do a time lapse to watch uh, ice cream sticks to melt uh, which will need a specification of time intervals between the shots a bit longer than usual. And then I'm going to show a second example which is uh, taken in Zurich at the big place in front of the opera with lots of people moving also in a 4K video compiled finally and I might also briefly show how to compile the single frames into a video. Okay, let's go into the app. I was just describing here, Intervalometer. Let's go into the app. Uh, let's go into the camera app. Let's make sure everything is set up in the way I want it. So we have 40 megapixels here. That looks actually good. Um, we um, configure the app by finding out where the shutter button is. We go to OK. And um, I think we have a pretty nice uh, scene now here, a nice frame. Uh, we stick to the timer of five seconds delay before the sequence of shots starts. Uh, we stick to 600 images. But the time between the frames uh, we set now to, let's say, 15 seconds. Because I have no experience, I'm not a physicist, how quickly ice is melting, let's probably go to start infinity and uh, maybe 15 seconds is not long enough. Maybe let's go to 20 seconds here just to give a bit more speed here. And now I go to start infinity and uh, the app will count down 5 seconds and then it's taking shots every 20 seconds. So we wait for 20 seconds then we get the next shot and all of these images will be stored in the storage and the memory of my phone. I can uh, drag and drop them later to my computer, compile them to a time-lapse video in Final Cut Pro and in this way get a time-lapse of melting ice. You see the scheme here. Okay, super. We let the phone work. This will take longer than an hour and then uh, we uh, look at the final result. After taking the sequence of shots with the Intervalometer app, I now have, if you look at the bottom here, 232 photos on my computer via drag and drop from the P30. If you look at them, uh, they uh, basically replicate the scene here. Um, let's maybe open this up and let's look at the, um, sorry that was one too much, let's look at the EXIF data here. So you see here the resolution, this is the full 40 megapixels. You also see the uh, fixed aperture of the primary lens f1.6 and you see this was taken with 1 over 100 as an exposure time. And uh, let's scroll down arbitrarily a little bit and let's look at some other pictures here. So maybe here, you see now the ice is melted. Again, if you look at the EXIF data here, um, it's the full 40 megapixels. So the app did a good job in simulating a person pressing the shutter button uh, every 20 seconds. Since I have only um, 232 frames here and the ice is completely melted at the end, I uh, overestimated the time interval between the frames with 20 seconds. I should probably have taken 8 seconds 
or uh, 10 th seconds, but that's, you know, what happens if you do an experiment without practicing before, and I think that's okay. Let's now look at the uh, compiled time lapses. I do this in Final Cut Pro. Later in the video, I show how to do this with a different sample. And uh, I will show you the short clip in three versions, one with the frames as they are. So basically like this, one with uh, a crop applied to the frames. And I think the crop in Final Cut Pro makes the whole scene a bit more artistic because uh, the borders are basically cut off. And then a third example where I use a so-called Ken Burns effect, which makes the video and the time lapse a bit more lively and uh, includes some movement into the sequence of shots. Okay, let's get started. The second example I want to show was a sequence of shots I took in Zurich over the weekend, close to the opera. And if you look at the samples here, they are quite nice. Um, they have been shot with exactly the same parameters as the ice melting experiment I showed before. So let's briefly look into the EXIF of the pictures. Uh, you see here it's the full 40 megapixel resolution. It's the primary lenses f-stop of 1.6, which is fixed. And since it was a very sunny and bright day, the shutter speed is very quick and exposure time very short. And I'm going to show now quickly how to compile the time lapse in high resolution in Final Cut Pro 10, because some people might not know how to do this. There might be different software for different computers you can use, but this is my preferred choice on my MacBook. Let's have a look. Be patient for a moment. It only takes a few minutes. And then I show the finally compiled time lapse. In Final Cut Pro, go to File, New, and Create a New Library. That's the first step to do the time lapse from the sequence of shots. We call this time lapse accordingly. And we save it. So we have now a new library. Go to File, New, and Event. Call this uh, Frames. This will be the location for the frames compiled together for the time lapse. Let's import them. I'm selecting now the right folder here, uh, which is from my Zurich uh, sequence of shots here. Press Command A for getting them all and import them all. Depending on the performance of your computer, this might take a while and you can check the progress if you go to the upper left hand side of Final Cut Pro and click that little um, task item and then you get actually the progress. I'm going to speed this up now a little bit because we don't want to waste time with uh, uploading pictures here into the software. Then create a new project, call this again time lapse. You can choose here uh, what video resolution you want to have. I decided for 4K because we have high resolution, also 30 frames per second. Okay, good to go. Project created. Now go to your frames event, choose all pictures, drag and drop them to the timeline. And uh, then you basically have uh, the um, ingredients for the time lapse. Press Ctrl and D. D is for duration. And if you do that, the color of the digits in the middle of the screen change to a different color. Press 1, return. And then uh, you have 30 frames per second. Click right. Select new compound clip. Call this time lapse or whatever you want. And then your clip is created. And all we have to do now is select the clip again, go to File and Share and export this with the resolution we want to have. You can uh, tweak around in uh, the label of the video and in your tags and what have you. So for instance, I give this a tag called the Time Lapse Zurich. So I will find it again based on the tag. You can also choose uh, the video codec here on the settings. And I uh, decided for an efficient one here. And then we press next and can store this on our hard disk. And then uh, this is all good to go.